Hey guys, and welcome to day six of the food styling challenge. I am so excited to be here this morning with you. We are talking all about pasta today. I can't wait to get started, so let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so the first thing to know about pasta is that um, you can cook and hold pasta for quite a while. Um, a day at least uh, ahead of time, we cook this often if we're prepping for a big shoot. You just want to rinse it out with cold water after you're done just to stop that cooking process and then add a little bit of olive oil in there and you can bag it up and put it in the fridge. Um, we do let it cool out uh, completely before we stick it in the bag so it's not sweating and overcooking there. Now the important thing to know about pasta is you don't want to overcook it. Um, really al dente, just a hair even a before al dente is a good spot to start with. Um, the other thing to know is that pasta tends to deflate quite a bit. So what you want to kind of do here is make enough movement that it's not just going to start sinking and sinking the more we start adding things on there. So a big thing that we do here is we use a base. So I'm going to kind of demo that out with you guys here and show you how you can build one of those. I'm just going to run and grab a spoon really quick. Okay, perfect. So we've got our spoon here. And so what I'm imagining here on this dish is I want this to be a nice kind of tower of pasta here that we're going to kind of swirl around. And uh, we're going to do two demos here. We're going to do a cream sauce demo. And then we're also going to do like a meat, savory kind of spaghetti sauce demo. So let's go ahead and get started with the spaghetti sauce. So we're just going to take, this is just instant mashed potatoes, nothing fancy. Uh, you can buy the cheapest boxes of them that you can find. And we're just going to start to make kind of a mound here. And what I'm really doing with this is just adding that height to it and it's going to give it something to adhere to and really give us something to style around, which is going to be great. So that looks pretty good. And now we're going to start with our pasta. Um, to get started, you're just going to really want to get a base going. So we're just going to start kind of layering here. And then after we have that base, we can get into a little bit more of the fine tuning here. But the goal right now is really just to get that mashed potatoes completely covered there and kind of start that process. So that's pretty good there. Now, as we're going through here, we're going to kind of pull this out. Now, the other thing to know is when you're cooking your pasta, not only do you want to make it al dente, but you also don't want to break the pieces. So I know for a lot of people, you don't want to have like a giant noodle when you're eating. That is not the case in food styling. You want them as long as possible. And we're going to actually kind of separate these out a little bit and drape them over our hands here. Just kind of separate them like that. And try to get those the long ones kind of around there. And then we're just going to do a twirl. So we're just going to kind of work this here, do some twirling, kind of bring those tails in. And that's just going to create a lot of movement there. You can kind of fuss with it as you lay them down. But the big idea here is we're just getting lengths going and we're draping over there and really creating that nice movement through. Kind of a twirl through here just to create that movement. So we're going to go ahead and build that whole plate out here. And don't make them too sequential. These angel hair don't really let you do that because it's going to kind of all stick to each other. But if you have straight up spaghetti or you have fettuccine and you can really clearly see um, the breakdown in where you've been uh, twisting them like that, you want to go in and kind of give it a little bit more of a natural look. So we want it to look styled, but we want it not to look styled too, which is kind of interesting. So just kind of placing through there and then playing with that placement a little bit. Separating them out and just giving them that nice amount of movement through there. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Now, we're going to do the, um, the spaghetti sauce one first. And again, if it gets up too high, you can, that's the nice thing about that potato is you can really manipulate it well. If you don't have potato, um, instant mashed potatoes, I always recommend you keep it on hand. But if you run out or you end up on a set and they don't have any and you aren't in control, 
you can use a lot of different things for this. You can, um, you can use a lot of paper towels that's all wetted up. You can um, smush bread together. You can do a lot of different things. Anything that's going to give you height and a little bit of flexibility. I just really, really do love the mashed potato. Um, some people will use shortening. The thing about shortening to know is that you don't want to use it if you're if any of your stuff is hot, you don't want to use it because it's just going to be a big mess when you get done. So now that we've kind of got that there, let's go ahead and start layering on our sauce here. And again, see how that's not deflating the pasta through there? That's really the key here. Now, some people will sauce their spaghetti sauce beforehand, but um, it's more common to see it kind of just piled on like this. You just want to kind of layer through here, making sure that you're not making it too heavy, and just kind of look through for um, for holes, for places that just look a little unnatural, or they're giving you a kind of an eyeball. Especially if you have anything that has um, holes in it, whether it's manicotti or whether it's you know, penne or anything like that, making sure that you don't have anything that's too glaringly uh, sequential. And then once you get that kind of started through here layer it on where you think it should go. And depending on the client, depending on you, um, they may want it really heavily sauced, they may want it really light, they might have meatballs. Any of these can be um, options and variables that you're going to run into. The other thing to have on hand um, that I don't have on the set right now is you want to just have some of the sauce without the meat in it if you're doing a meat sauce so that you can kind of fill in where you need to fill in. And then just use your tweezers and you can just kind of twirl with your tweezers a little bit if you need to add a little bit more movement through there to just kind of pull those um, around and through adding where you need and again thinking about where your camera is coming from if you're coming overhead you're really going to want to get up and over to look at where you're styling if you're shooting straight on that's going to give you a little bit different too um, so that's kind of our basics there and then we're just going to garnish here I always like to um, go with a little bit of coarse black pepper and a little bit of coarse salt. I just feel like it gives it a lot of texture through there uh, that the camera really picks up really nicely and it just makes it look makes it look finished, especially on the pasta. I like a little bit a little bit on my pasta. Um, as your pasta sits out, it's going to dry a little bit and um, you can counteract that just using a spray bottle. This is just a, a little spray bottle you can get from the grocery store. Uh, like at Walmart or anything like that, you're just going to kind of spritz through here and give yourself a little, a little refresher through there, a little bit of gloss. Um, the other thing that you can do is uh, use your paintbrush with a little bit of oil and just kind of brush through there to give some refreshment in that, um, in that pasta. It's just a little dry. And then finally, of course, we have, um, we have Parmesan cheese. You can't have spaghetti without Parmesan, in my opinion. So there are a lot of different options for Parmesan. Uh, obviously, if you have a, if you're working with a Parmesan client, that kind of you know locks you in. But there's this very finely crumbled, which um, a lot of pizza places seem to like that. But my preference is actually um, the kind of generally shredded uh, Italian cuisine kind of thing, where you get some of the bigger, uh, the bigger flakes there. I think that it just it styles so nicely. And it's really easy to just grab on the go um, without having to sit there and work through stuff with it. So I'm just going to kind of sprinkle that onto the top there. And you can see sometimes you're going to get some bigger pieces that maybe don't really look right, especially on an overhead shot. So once we kind of get that in there, I'm going to come back in and just clean up where it doesn't really make sense for that to, um, that to be sitting. Perfect. Just like that. Uh, you can also use, you know, a block of Parmesan cheese and uh, microplane. This is one of our favorite, the microplane yellow one. Not really sure exactly what size it is, but uh, this produces a better uh, Parmesan grate for us than the long skinny ones of theirs. And especially if you're getting an action shot with the Parmesan cheese falling down, that's a really great one for that. Just make sure you're getting it up out of the frame so you don't have a um, glaringly yellow thing in your uh, in your shot there. And then we're going to go ahead and garnish. And you just 
wait until the very end. If you're working on a set for quite a while, uh, go ahead and keep these wrapped with a paper towel, wet paper towel, or keep them in water. And then just kind of place that over the top. And that is our spaghetti sauce, guys. So that is uh, finished. We're gonna grab a new plate and start on our cream sauce. Okay, here we go. So the biggest difference on a sauce like this is that uh, this is something that would traditionally be served with fettuccine, not angel hair. Um, but it's a, it's a pasta that is served sauced, and that's a big difference than our spaghetti sauce. So I wanted to kind of just demo out how it is that we work with this. So again, you'd be using fettuccine, not angel hair for the most part for this. But you want to go ahead and just come in here, and you're really going for a light saucing. You do not want this to be super heavy. Um, you can even thin this down a little bit with a little bit of milk if you find that it's getting too kind of globby. You just want to come in here. Oops, I'm shaking the whole set. Hold it up here. Uh, and you just want to use your fingers and very lightly just get it nice and coated uh, throughout there so that it has that nice shine. It looks like it's sauced. But you do not want to sauce this. If you are working in a restaurant and they um, are bringing you the food, you do not want it fully sauced. It, it's just going to die on the set. It's not going to hold up with all that sauce on there. So a nice light, and I'm not going to do a whole plate of this, you guys. I'm just going to do kind of a nice side piece here. Just so you can see, that's the amount of sauce that you want to work with there. And then after you get this on the set and you get this styled, all twirled nicely, um, you can use something like this. This is a, a disposable pipette. These come in like packs of a thousand from Amazon. I'll link them in the comments here. And they're great because they come uh, very skinny. So if you have really, really thin sauces, you can do lots of designs with them. But again, they're like very inexpensive. So you can cut them down just like that to where you really get a nice um, sauce picker upper. That's not really the phrase. But suck a little bit of sauce up through there and you can just kind of bring it in right where you need a little bit um, through here and just kind of bring it around just like that and place it really right where you want it. Now you want to do this part at the very end after you've done the rest of the styling on the set, after you've done the rest of the styling on the plate. This is going to make that pasta break down a lot faster. And then you're just going to come in with your uh, brush. Use all my big brushes. Um, Coming with a brush, you can put a little bit of oil on here too, and just kind of move that through your set a little bit there and paint that into your, uh, your location. And that's going to give you the appearance of it being very heavily sauced without it breaking down as you're trying to do the rest of the styling with all that liquid on there. So that's there. Um, when you're working with chicken, you can do a lot of fancy things with it um, to deal with the fat and all of that glistening and all that, but honestly, the easiest thing that I often do is I just try to get it nice and warm. So you can see that this one has started to congeal just sitting here in the time that we have styled. If you have the option, um, not everybody does, not every set allows, uh, I just pop it back in the microwave, give it a quick minute glass, not a minute, like about 15 seconds, and then we'll just liquefy the fat that's on there and give you that nice gloss. If you don't have time for that and you are on set or you're in a restaurant and that's not an option, you can just um, ask them to bring it to you without it being uh, cooked, like without any of the fat on it, and then you just add in the fat yourself. And normally you'd have a little, a little bowl of your oil, um, which you don't seem to have right here. So we're just going to brush that with a little bit of oil, and that's going to give you just that really nice sheen. It's going to make it look really rich, juicy, and not dried out at all. The last thing we want meat to look like is dry. Um, so when in doubt, add more oil to all of your meat. So that, um, that is that. And then let's just talk maybe one more piece through here. Just kind of like that, pressing it in, and then using your tweezers to just kind of pull back 
through there. And then we're going to add a few fresh tomatoes to this. And again, just tucking through there and grabbing that brush and grabbing a little bit of your sauce and just kind of painting that onto there. And that is how you uh, kind of assemble these pasta dishes on the go there. Um, this gives you a lot more flexibility to kind of build it out in layers as you're going without it deteriorating. You can see that this is already starting to break down through here um, because we added that sauce on before we were done with all of this. So again, you want to finish your whole set there, get the garnish on there, and then add that extra bit of sauce in there because it's just going to make that pasta start to wilt and really fade out. And that is a wrap, you guys. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I hope that this answers a lot of questions. I get a lot of questions about pasta and twirling and styling. And really it is just laying over your hand and really working it in twists and kind of pulling that through the whole plate there with your fingers and also with a really good pair of either angled tweezers like this or some people prefer straight tweezers. Some people use chopsticks. I'm not that coordinated. So these are my preference. These are aquarium tweezers for like digging stuff out of fish tanks um, if you're looking for those on Amazon. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, leave me a comment below if that was helpful. Let me know.